Today's video is being sponsored by Instant Gaming. Play smart, pay less. Thank you so much to Instant Gaming for sponsoring today's video. With being a console gamer my entire life, I've only recently moved over to PC gaming and Instant Gaming has been a lifesaver in allowing me to purchase games I've always wanted to play at a reasonable price. Instant Gaming offers discounts on all the most current titles and has massive discounts on our favourite Frontier games including Planet Coaster, Planet Zoo and Jurassic World Evolution. Make sure to click the link above or below in the description to get some amazing games at affordable prices. Again, thank you to Instant Gaming for sponsoring this video, but without further ado, let's hop into the video, shall we? Hello, it's Mike coming at you with another Planet Zoo Console Edition video. Welcome back to Eden Garden Zoological Park. In the last episode, we made a start on the elephant enclosure. And in between episodes, very unusually, I haven't really done much. I haven't done any tweaks or anything because I've been so busy in real life, I haven't had time to play the game as much as I would have liked. Real life sucks. I just want to play this all the time, but apparently I have to spend time with the family. Who knew? But today, we are going to get this elephant enclosure finished and I'm going to give you a pre-warning. There is going to be a lot of time lapses in this video as we attempt to get this done. So without further ado, let's hop into the zoo, shall we? Right, so here we are back in the zoo again. So the elephants have all gone back to the trade center whilst we get this enclosure done. And the first thing I want to do is address this water because right now it's just not big enough. There is not enough water requirement for the elephants right in there. So we're gonna to need to adjust this and make this a lot bigger. And I'm also gonna make a deeper area for them to go swimming in. So I'm going around deleting all of the limestone pieces and then just expanding the entire thing. This wasn't quick and it wasn't easy. Rather than just having the one ramp for the elephants to get to the water, I thought I would expand it so they can get in all sides. With the water now expanded, it's now time to start tackling the enclosure. So what we're going to do is we're going to flatten all of the terrain around the entire area. If I'm being honest, I think in the last episode when I went around roughening, I was a little bit too early because I hadn't taken into consideration the fact that we're going to need to put the hard shelter in here somewhere. So we're going to delete all of the barrier, we're going to flatten all of that out and we'll start doing this hard shelter. So using this mud wall, I'm going to use four two metre pieces, making it eight metres tall, and then we'll start decorating as we go up. Rather than just having the one solid colour coming all the way up, I thought I would change the colouring just to make it a little bit different. And then with the first wall piece done, we can now copy the entire thing and create this entire hard shelter. Thank you. 
With the outline now done, it's just a question of moving it where I exactly want it to be. This is going to be the set place now and we'll work around this moving forward. We need to ensure that the elephants have got doorways to get into the hard shelter, so deleting all them pieces there. And now we just need to put the roof on. So using the thatch roof two meter pieces, we're gonna go around the entire building adding this roof. With the thatch roof now all down, now we just need to put the roof on, and I thought a glass roof would really complement this build. Due to the 4 meter width of the glass, I couldn't get it lined up without it looking a little bit silly. So using this 2 meter width glass pane, I was able to put that in the center. With all of the glass done, it's now a question of getting some columns going around the entire building acting as a support. I couldn't find a base for these columns, so I eventually decided on these New World planters and then turning them upside down as a mounting point for the columns. We need to think about how the keeper can access this enclosure. Sometimes when placing the gates down, they don't line up just how you want. So by placing the invisible barrier down, I can get it straight just how I want it. And then deleting some of them wooden posts, deleting the mud wall piece, and then just copying one over, taking it off the grid and then sliding it back over. The door is actually quite hidden in that wallway right there. The hard shelter is now almost finished. Using them mesh fences as a divider in between the elephants, we're also going to use them as a roof covering. And then what we used as the base for that floor right there, we'll also copy that up and use that as a roof. With the hard shelter and the terrain now done, now we can bring this over to put the water back in once again. So using the flattened terrain tool to make sure that's all lined up nicely, we'll push that down a little bit and then we'll flatten the terrain so none of the terrain is poking through and then we can add the water back in again.
And now comes the bit you were all waiting for. I know you were all waiting for this moment when Matty starts placing way more rocks than what is required. Very unusually, rather than go around the entire thing placing loads of different rocks down, I'm actually going to create a small wall and then just copy and paste it coming around, but making sure to rotate it having it different heights to make it all look different. And the elephants are back in again. It's nice to see that they fit in the hard shell tip. Just about. <laughs> it's a little bit squished in there, but it'll be okay. Have they got enough room? Yeah, I, I think so. I think that's a big enough hard shelter for them. I think that is the biggest elephant that we have got. Now, the question is, can you guys escape from anywhere? Let's have a look. Ah, right. Okay. I believe that is because the habitat border actually comes across there. Yes, it does. So what we'll do is we'll just delete that and we'll delete that piece and then we'll just bring it coming all the way through the rocks and that should sort that problem. So we'll extend it just coming underneath these rocks here round the back and then link it back up there again and that should sort the problem i don't think you guys will be able to escape now we'll unpause the game again and yep that is fixed fantastic and you can get around the entire enclosure the hard shelter is at 100 percent. the terrain is also at 100 percent. that is fantastic here comes the third and fourth one right now. So the space, there's more than enough space. There's more than enough water. Yeah, we're definitely on to a winner right here. So I think we'll add the enrichment items back in again. And the weather has taken a turn for the worst. What's going on with you? Oh, he's asleep. Oh, I thought he was dead. I was like, what's going on? How has one died already? So they're a little bit cold at the moment, but I think that's because it's raining. I'm just double checking. He's, he is breathing. It's fine. Oh, my little heart skipped a beat. I was like, how have we had a death already? They've only just come in. Oh, they've done so much pooping in here. We need to get a keeper inside here to clean up all that poop. Wow, these guys poop a lot. Right. Okay. Wow, this weather really did take a turn for the worst, didn't it? So next thing i think we need to think about putting some plants down now i will say i have turned off the plant coverage requirement okay and the reason for this is because i go way too over the top and i thought what's the point in having them unhappy with the plant coverage that i'm doing so i decided to just turn that requirement off which means i can just do whatever it is i want in these enclosures so let's get some plants down shall we
At this point, I've already spent probably a good hour just placing foliage only. You've already seen me do this multiple times in other episodes. You don't need to see me placing ridiculous amounts of foliage in every single episode that I do. You may have noticed around the trees, I built them wooden things. It was a little blueprint that I made because I thought I didn't want the elephants pushing up against the trees and knocking them over. So I created that little blueprint that just goes around the trees. But we are very almost finished with the foliage. We're just adding some nettles going around the hard shelter. And just as we come up to the end, we'll put a little bit more the dry grass just inside there. And I think we are done for the foliage. So the hard shelter has dropped down a little bit, but it's still in the green. That is not too bad. The traversable area, I blocked off a little bit back here. I think if I delete that rock and delete that, they should then be able to get around there. Oh, they're really liking the water look. Look at that one swimming. Right, so I blocked off a little bit of the area, but there's still more than enough traversable land for them. So, yeah, that is absolutely fine. Right, so what we need to do now is we need to think about keeping them in there and not falling into that water there. So what we're going to do is we are going to create a custom wall. So I think we'll use a wooden piece. I quite like that. So we'll use one of them and then we'll create a custom fence using them. So using the European cast iron fence, we'll put that in the middle and we'll create our own custom barrier using that. With the first fence piece now done, we're just gonna copy and paste it coming all the way over. If we delete that left-hand log, then we can line it up really nicely. Unfortunately, it didn't quite go straight, so I kept having to tweak it just to get it go across that in a straight line. With the fence for the elephants now in place, we now need to think about the guests and putting a fence there so they don't lemmings and jump off the side into the water. So like what we did with the prairie dog enclosure, we're going to take an existing fence that is already in the park and then we're gonna tweak it and make it original for this enclosure. I feel that the four meter grid there is too much. So I'm actually going to change that to a two meter width so the guests can get a little bit closer to the edge. With the limestone wall piece now done, now we can adjust this fence and make it unique. I'm going to use one of these decorative columns at the side and use this as a template.
With the phase two now lined up, it's just a question of going around the entire area, fencing all of this in. Our final job for today's episode is we just need to align this roof tile piece coming underneath there. There is still a little bit more work to do, there's still a little bit more tweaking. I need to add the education, I need to add the donation bins, but I'll do that in between episodes. But for now, I think we can call that it. And I'm really happy with how this all came together. I'm gonna to be completely honest, despite being extremely busy the last few days, I have had moments, maybe an hour or so here and there, where I could have been playing, but I haven't been sure how to approach this build. And it's taken me a couple of days to try and get a plan formulated in my head how I was gonna approach this. I think we need to just adjust their food. So let's come across here. We'll swap that to grade two because we haven't got grade three at the moment because they're not very happy with their meal quality. But other than that, their welfare is extremely good. The traversable area is fantastic. So yeah, we have not done too bad at all here. I'm really happy with how all of this came together. Unfortunately, the hard shelter isn't quite enough, but I think it's more than sufficient for what is required for this build. But you're going to have to let me know down below in the comments what you all think. I'm going to be back in a couple of days where we will make a start on the Lima enclosure. Until then, take care, stay safe, look after yourselves, and I will see you all in a couple of days. Bye, everybody!